take action. Gabriel, he's going to be talking about a really important subject that's hitting millions and millions and millions and millions of people. And I don't think there's one of us that haven't experienced some depression in your life. For some of you, you're living in depression. And for some of you, depression visits you. It's like, a, it's like a, it visits you. It, it gets in your head and your emotions are all up and down. But I got some good news for you. You don't need to be surviving, struggling with, with depression. You can actually overcome it. Come on, is there anybody who wants to learn how to overcome it? Overcome depression and get set free and help other people overcome. Let's get Gabriel a way one hour. welcome. He's pastoring like, the way I lay over there. Hello, hello. Give, give Pastor Marco a hand. He's what you call an uh, OG. No, I'm kidding. He's so young. He's so young. How you guys doing? Man, it feels so good to see you guys tonight. You know, we're going to be covering a, a, a serious topic. And I believe that God has the ability to strip you of any type of depression that you're experiencing right now. I also believe that God has the ability to give you revelation to begin to understand and pinpoint, oh, that's what I'm struggling with. Because until you know what it is that you're going through, it's very hard to begin to combat and, and to defeat it. So we're going to talk about this, but I want to go ahead and get into, let's start by prayer. Father, we thank you that tonight that you would begin to deliver us from every depressing stronghold in the name of Jesus. We thank you that tonight, that we could come to you with everything that we have. We can come to you right now, no matter who we are, no matter what we've done, no matter where we have been, we can come to you, Jesus, tonight, and we can get help, we can get freedom, but most of all, we can receive love tonight. Would you heal us, God, tonight? Would you make us whole tonight? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I'll give a quick shout out. My grandma, I got my grandma all the way from Las Vegas. She's here. Yeah. She's the one that I've been trying to teach me Spanish my whole life, but I wasn't really paying attention. Sorry, grandma. I need to get, I need to get there, but. Yeah, if you don't know me, my name is Gabriel. My wife and I, we have the privilege and the honor to pastor our L.A. campuses. I don't know who's here from L.A., but, man, thank you for driving. I know that was like a two-hour adventure, maybe three. You know, it's been going amazing out there. God has been moving. We have our South Campus, which is in Carson, California. And then we have our San Gabriel Valley Campus, which is in La Puente. And... We're, we're growing to the point where we need two new buildings. And God is beginning to just, not just save people, but people are being discipled and they're turning into leaders. And it's been a blessing. You know, millions of people worldwide, Pastor mentioned it briefly, but they're suffering from depression. A mental health condition that is very dark and crippling. Depression can drain you of your energy, rob us of our joy, and it can make us feel like we're living life on autopilot. If you have experienced depression or you know someone that has experienced depression, you understand firsthand how difficult it can be to find a way out of that darkness. John 10.10 10 shows us that there is a way out. It says that these purposes are still kill and destroy but my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. The way out to depression is Jesus. You see, the devil wants to rob you of everything that you have. The devil wants to strip you of everything that you are. The devil wants to bring you to your lowest places that you will ever be at 
He wants to put you there, and He wants to use you as a trophy to God. He wants to use you and abuse you, but God has a greater plan for you to no longer be used, to no longer be abused, to no longer be uh, destroyed by the devil. God has a plan, and His plan is very, very satisfying. Some of us end up in depression trying to find satisfaction. But the scripture here lets you know that satisfaction is in God's purpose for your life. So if you're struggling with depression, this is a teaching for you. Or if you know someone struggling with depression, this is a teaching for you to share with them. But we're going to move towards victory tonight. Someone say victory. Tell the person next to you, victory. The title of this sermon is called War Zone. We're going to focus on overcoming the war against depression. But before we go into that, I want a couple announcements. I actually wrote a book on overcoming depression. This Friday, it's going to be going to, to be audited. This Friday, to edit it. And it's going to be released in a week. And what I want you to do, if you can scan this QR code... You're not going to purchase it right now, but what you're going to do is you're going to put yourself into a position where you'll be able to be notified right away. Right when it comes out on Amazon, you're going to be the first to be emailed, to be texted, and let you know that this book is out. The book is titled Breaking the Chains of Depression, A Journey to Wholeness. It's a book that I'm telling you, like, you know, I created it through another sermon that I, that I made on depression. It's a book that you're going to buy and you're going to love, but you're going to end up giving it to many people because it's going to help them. And the other uh, announcement that I wanted to make, since we're talking about mental health, my wife, Abriana, give a, give a shout out, uh, clap for Aubrey. She beautiful, she beautiful. Faith and mental awareness. My wife touched on it a little bit. I just want to remind you, it's very, very important that you get there. Especially if you're in a season right now where you're like, dude, I'm emotionally just messing up right now. I'm going through some things. I need some help. I need to see what does the Bible say about overcoming mental illness. And maybe if you want to learn how to, how to, to be a counselor and learn how to help others overcome, it's this Saturday. You don't want to miss it. It's at 12 p.m. So three mindsets. That you need for breakthrough tonight. Somebody say tonight. Three mindsets. Number one is you need a mindset of humility. Humility. You be humble before God. This is the truth. If you're not humble when you read the scriptures, if you're not humble when God is ministering, you're not going to receive anything. Number two is you need to be desperate. Desperate to overcome If you still want to be depressed when you leave this place, if you're struggling with it, you're going to leave with it. You have to make up your mind that tonight is my night. Tonight, those those thoughts, the, the pattern, the cycle, all of that, I'm releasing it today. And the third thing is being teachable. Tell the person next to you, be teachable. Be ready to learn right now and from now on. Because we're constantly, constantly learning. I struggled with depression as a teenager and as a young adult. That depression in my life ended up turning into a lot of hate, rage, destruction. My family's dysfunction and several tragedies in within the family got me to a place where I kept imagining myself taking my own life. And disappearing. And I wasn't someone to talk about it, so I'd be partying, playing ping, uh, beer pong and all this stuff and doing things. And I wasn't telling people what I was going through. But I remember, like, around 18 or 19 years old, I was hanging out with some friends. And I actually, I think it's the same cove that um, in the Jesus Revolution movie where everyone was getting baptized. But I wasn't getting baptized. There. I was doing something else. I was smoking and drinking and doing some, and I was having a party there. And I remember at the end of it, I'm walking back to the car, and we're all, you know, all my friends are just hanging out. And I remember I just get drawn to this cliff. And I remember I began to start stepping towards this cliff, and I just 
it was it was like I almost couldn't get out of this thought of man, I should just jump over right now. I should just end my life right now. And I know that if I was to jump, I knew that it would be over. And thankfully somebody ended up saying, Hey Gabriel, where are you at? Hurry up, we're leaving. Because it kind of just helped me snap out of it. And I remember like I caught myself like, man. Because these fantasies that we allow ourselves to meditate on, these imaginations, you know, the devil's goal is that one day they will manifest to become your reality. A couple months or, or shortly after that, I received an amazing invitation to come to church. And at that service, Pastor Marco was preaching and he gave the best invitation I've ever heard in my life. And it was to give my life to Jesus Christ. There was an exchange. There was an exchange for all the depression that I was dealing with. There was an exchange for the suicidal thoughts that I had. There was an exchange for the lack of, of love and the hopelessness that I had. And I was able to just exchange it right there with God. I didn't have to come with all these things worked out in my own life already. I came so messed up. I still had cocaine in my system. I still had all these different thoughts and friends and all this culture that I came from. But I just knew I needed help. You have to be real with yourself if you need help. Tonight is your night to receive that help. How do you know if you're dealing with depression? The first thing is you need to take inventory. In Psalms 139, 23 through 24, David, he, he says, Search me, O God, know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you. And lead me along the path of everlasting life. It's healthy to begin to just take inventory, see where you're at. There's many symptoms of depression, and I want to go over some right now. These are symptoms that you might be dealing with depression. Number one, persistent sadness, anxiety, and emptiness. Number two, feelings of hopelessness. Or negativity, irritability, or frustration, even over small matters. Number four, constant thoughts on past failures and regrets. Number five, lack of care in your hygiene and your appearance. Number six, a loss of interest or pleasure in hobbies and activities. Number seven, a decreased energy or fatigue. Number eight, these are all signs that people struggle with depression. Difficulty concentrating, making des decisions, or remembering things. Number nine, insomnia. Early morning wakefulness or excessive sleeping. Number ten, appetite and weight changes. Number 11, thoughts of self-hatred, death, suicide, or suicide attempts. Number 12, isolation, lack of interest in relationships, and lack of communication with others. Now, maybe you notice that you have one or none, I don't know, maybe you're dealing with some of these symptoms. How do we respond? We need to bring it to God. 1 Peter 5, 7 lets you know, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. If you're going through anything on this list, you need to understand and grasp this, that God actually does care that you're going through these things, that God actually does, he really does want to help you to overcome these things. Somebody say, God cares. He cares about you, and you can bring these things to him. Now, I know some of us might feel like, man, I can't talk to nobody about my things. I can't share these things that I'm going through with anybody. You can share these things with God. You can begin to talk to God. There's real demons of depression that are assigned to hold you in the chains of depression. It's a real battlefield. It's a real war zone to keep those symptoms that we just covered to keep them in cycles in your life. This is a war. No one 
me, Pastor Marco, none of us have mentioned, if you've been in this church, we never preach that walking with Jesus is going to be an easy walk for you. We never preach that. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be a war. But there's good news. This is the good news. If you're in a place right now where you're just like, man, I'm broken. If I could be honest with you, I put on a front at work. I put on a front at church. My wife doesn't even know or your husband doesn't even know. But, man, I am going through so many things, and I feel so alone. I feel like I can't conquer it. It's a cycle. It's over and over and over. Man, this has been going on since I was 10 years old. I'm tired of it. This is the good news right here. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Come on, raise your hand if you've ever been brokenhearted. Some of you are broken right now. Your spirit is broken. Your vision is broken. You, you have no momentum. You have no excitement when you wake up. You, you've been robbed of your joy. And God's saying, hey, you're broken right now. But let, let's look at what the Bible says about what happens when you are broken. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves. Someone say saves those who are crushed in spirit. If you're crushed in spirit right now, if you've been feeling broken right now, do you know that the Lord Almighty is right next to you right now in this very moment, in the hardest times, God is right next to you. Don't believe the lie that you are on an island and nobody is for you and no one cares about you. Even if, if your family left you, even if your friends left you, there's someone that's greater. His name is Jesus, and he will never leave you. He's 100% for you. Before we answer, I'm going to go into seven keys but before we go into these seven keys to winning the war against depression, I want to let you know that it's vital that you surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Romans 3, 23 through 24, it says, For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. And then Romans 10, 9, it says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Somebody say saved. So give your life to Jesus tonight. It's the most important step towards overcoming depression. And I'm going to revisit that thought at the end of this message. I want to go into seven keys right now to overcoming the war against depression. And the reason why God told me that this title is War Zone, because the only way you're going to conquer this depression is if you attack it. If you turn it, you got to get into a, your warrior mindset. I mean, I know if so, not all of you, but some of you, someone was, especially before Jesus, someone was going to slap you. Some of you guys are going to throw the hands. I know a couple, I'll point you out right now, I was kidding. No, but I, like some of you guys, you for sure would just be like, ain't nobody, nobody touching me. They didn't even have to touch you, they just be in like motion. And you're already like, bah, 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 bah. like you're already like tagged them like six times, you little boxer. We, some of you, not a soul could honk at you. Because if they do, you have your brights on them. You're going crazy. You don't, you're not even from a gang, but you be throwing up gang signs. A, B, C, D. Like you do all these things like. You get aggressive out of nowhere. I want you to begin tonight to aim that aggression towards depression. I want you tonight to begin to use that warrior in you, the little crazy you, Use that to defeat something that's been defeating you. And some of us, it hasn't just been defeating you, it's currently defeating your kids right now. Some of us, it didn't just 
work against you, but it's been defeating you, your family for generations. Which one of you and your family are going to say, yo, I'm going to be the warrior that stands up against this? I'm going to be the one that says, hey, depression has no place in my life anymore. Depression has no place in my family, in my legacy. We bind all depression in the name of Jesus. Come on, if you're going to actually overcome it, you need to dig deep inside and you need to find that fighter within you. You have to fight. You ain't going to overcome it, us just getting all your food and spoon feeding you, and you ain't going to overcome it like that. You're going to overcome it when you say, I had enough of it, I'm ready, let's get it. Sometimes you know you need to just slap yourself in the face and just wake up and say, Where at, what am I doing? You know, when you get really caught up in depression, you lose time like that. Time just passes you by, time just passes you by. Maybe you've given enough time to depression, and it's time to say, I'm, I'm getting my time back, and now I'm going to give my time to God. I'm going to release everything that I am to the Lord, and I'm going to receive freedom tonight. Seven keys. Number one, face it head on. You need to face it head on. Go head to head. Face it. Many times when you're battling depression... There's countless moments where you don't even have the strength and the energy to even, I, I, I'm good, I'm not going to overcome it today, I'm not going to deal with it today. You stay in your bed, you stay in your comfort zone, you stay in whatever it is that you're going through, you say, maybe tomorrow I'll get up. Psalms 34, 17, it says, the righteous cry out for help, and the Lord hears and he rescues them and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. How do you face it head on? You get on your knees and you cry out to God. How do you face it head on? You get on your knees and you cry out to God. God, help me with this depression. God, I'm finished with it. I let it go right now. I release it to you. Whatever the thoughts are, whatever the things that I'm, I'm harboring right now, I'm going to get in a posture of saying, God, I give it to you right now. Because when you begin to truly cry out to God, he comes through as your rescuer. You need to tap into a strength that is greater than yours if you're going to face this head on. You need to tap into the strength of Jesus. Philippians 4.13 is a very popular scripture, but it's time for you to apply it to your life. It says, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Someone say strength. You have supernatural strength through Jesus Christ. Supernatural strength through Jesus. You can conquer it through Christ. You need to face it head on. Some of us, we don't want to revisit our past because of, of the wounds. You have to. You have to revisit that. You have to go back to that. You have to face it. But you're going to face it with God. You're going to have the strength. God, you, you know, when I have to deal with things, I literally will say, God, give me the strength. We're going to talk about forgiveness in a little bit, but whether you have to forgive someone or whatever it is, God, give me the strength to do this. Because I know me and my own will, I just, man, I can't. I need you to help me do this. That's okay. Say that. You can talk to God like that. Ask him to help you. The other key is number two, keep your mouth in check. Keep your mouth in check. Check. Somebody say, check. Keep your mouth in check. Oh, it might be so hard, right? Woo! That's a difficult one, right? You have to be careful on what you're speaking because you could be releasing curses over your life. You could be releasing constant, constant negativity out of your mouth, and you're going to reap that. Instead, develop a praise life. What does that mean? 
where you're praising God with that mouth that you have. God gave you that mouth. You know why? To praise Him. God gave you that mouth not to complain about how everything is so bad right now and how nothing is working out. God gave you that mouth so that you can use your voice to begin to sing praises to Him so that you could begin to speak to Him and say, Thank you, God, for the blessings that I do have right now. Gratitude, thanksgiving, all those things right there, they attract God. They attract blessings. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. Do you realize how powerful your words are? Especially when you're in the battle of depression. Like, you got to really, really, really be careful on what you're saying about your situation or about yourself when you're battling depression. I would even say this. You can't afford to have any words of negativity or any ungodly words coming out of your mouth when you're in a battle. You can't. What you're speaking is where you're headed. What you're speaking is where you're headed. It navigates you like a GPS. Whatever you're saying, you're headed there. If the words that you speak over your life are, I'm no good for nobody. If, you say, if somebody left you and say, well, I don't even want to go and, and try again because they're probably going to leave me too. If, you're, if you feel like, you know, God was showing me this morning, he was showing me some people are in depression because they fell. Because you fell into sin, you're depressed, and now you don't want to get back up because you're saying something, some lie to yourself like this. I don't want to get back up and fail again. I don't want to go back and, and start going all out for Jesus because I fell. That's a lie of the devil to keep you down. The Bible says even a righteous man, he will fall seven times. But you know what happens? He gets back up seven times. I'm telling somebody tonight, you need to get up. No one's going to baby you. You need to get up tonight. Tonight is your night to get up. Someone say, get up. You got to get up. I mean, if you... This is a, a, a mental note that I've always had my whole life. If I get into any physical altercation, growing up, as a teenager, as a young adult, I always knew if I hit the pavement, I better move, I better get quick. Like, I better pop up quick. I don't care if my head is busted. One time my shirt was off and they were dragging me along the street and I had like this, my whole back was black and bloody and stuff from the street. And as I'm getting, like, kicked and stomped out and, like, kicked in the face, I'm like, okay. I don't even know if I said this story yet. Some of y'all might be in here, the ones who jumped me. I was kidding. It was in San Bernardino, so <laughs> if you're all right, don't worry about it. I forgive you. We got to catch the, the – no, I was kidding. All right, so catch the third one. No, I was kidding. But I remember I'm on the floor. I'm on my hands and my knees, and I have my – you know, I just I, – it was a bad situation. And I'm getting kicked in. Have you ever been – in anything like that, you know, it's, it's real. And I just remember telling myself, I'm getting kicked by, like, every, there, there's girls and guys jumping me. So everybody wanted to get their little kick in. They're just, they're just, you know, they're getting me. And then they, so, you know, some, a couple times, you see someone hitting you from the side. And I remember I'm in it, and I'm like, okay, on the count of three, I'm about to pop up and go, go crazy on them. I'm getting, like, like, hit in, like, bad. I just remember... If they jump me, they're going to remember this right here because you ain't going to forget this. If you watch our live, like, I was that guy. Yeah, I was the one. But I remember I'm, I'm getting, I'm just getting like beat up. It was one in the morning. I was walking home to San Bernardino from a party. And I'm getting hit and I'm just like, one, two. I'm just like getting, like as I'm counting, it looks like a boat. Like I'm just getting rocked. Like, right? And I'm like, one, two, three. I'm going to pop up and just go start cracking people. One, two, three. Boom. I just, and I just started going crazy. I remember I socked myself twice in the face. 
It wasn't an accident. It was on purpose. I remember I told them, I said, I talked to myself twice. I said, man, I hit harder than you. What's up? And, and, I, and they're just like, man, this boy is crazy. So then they started getting gun, they're making gun threats and stuff because they couldn't put me out. But I just knew if I allow myself to go unconscious on that floor, I've been a part of things like that where people are just getting kicked in and stuff like that when they're, they ain't even, they're just like this and they're groaning. And so I already knew no matter what, I'm getting up. I don't even care if it's 10 of y'all, like I'm getting up and I'm going to just go head to head. That's the mindset that you need if you're going to actually conquer this depression. If you don't have that mindset, your mindset is too weak to conquer depression and depression knows it. That spirit of depression knows, oh, I got a weak one right here. Oh, this, this one's comfortable with me. They ain't got no fight in them. They ain't got no fight. You slap them one time. They, uh, the enemy knows it. And maybe you were not a fighter ever in your life. The Bible will help you become a fighter. Some of you are not fighters because you do not read the Bible. Some of us are in depression because we simply do not know God, and we simply do not understand our purpose, and we also do not know how to resist the devil. All of that is in the Bible. I'm going to get some DMs like, hey, bro, that was me. My bad. It would be funny if it was someone like one of our leaders or something that I didn't meet yet or something. Like, man, I knew you looked familiar. So understand that there is some real supernatural power within your mouth. James 3, 5 through 6, in the same way the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. In other words, you need to watch out what you're saying because your words are powerful. You can destroy people with just things that you speak over them. I'm going to go a little quick just for time, but because I want you guys to get all these keys. Number three, you need to take ownership of your responses to challenges in life. You need to accept the fact of this. There will be major challenges in life. It, there is. But when challenges hit your life and hit your house, you have to take ownership of your response. How can we develop a godly response to challenges? Philippians 4a, it has to do with your perspective. Philippians 4a, and now dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. You know what I'm saying is? In the battle, when you're going through hard times, you need to put your mind in check as well, and you need to also, whatever your response is, you need to own it. If you respond the wrong way to your wife, to your family, or however it is, maybe even just to yourself, you need to own it and say, man, I messed up, and I need to try this over. You're responsible for your actions. Your wife is not. Your husband is not. Your mama, your daddy, they're not responsible for your actions. You are responsible for your actions. Galatians 6, 5. For we are each responsible for our own conduct. It's literally in the Bible. Isn't that crazy? I feel like if you're a parent, you go ahead and use this. Like, this is a man. Your, your kids will be like, that's not in the Bible. Yeah, it is. You're responsible for your own conduct. Number four, receive love and reject depression. Many times when people are going through depression, they do the opposite. They reject love and they receive that depression, the thoughts of depression, all the things that come with depression, they receive it. And then when someone comes and tries to love on them, many times they reject it. I want you to practice receiving love no matter how depressed you are. 
do not ignore those calls. If there's family members, if there's friends, if there's people in church trying to love you through the hardest time of your life, allow them to be that. Do you not realize that those people are called by God to be with you in that moment? They're called to be there with you. That's what, like, you have to understand that that is an answer to your prayers. God does love you and he cares about you. You can 100% count on God. And number five, forgive people quickly and consistently. Forgive people quickly and consistently. It's not one sentence. Sometimes they might be forgiving the same person consistently. In other words, forgiveness needs to be a part of your lifestyle. Forgiveness has to be something that you are quick to react with forgiveness. That's the goal, right? To get to a place where somebody does something and you're just like, man, I already, like, no worries, like, you're good. Receive forgiveness from God and then you give forgiveness to others. Colossians 3.13, be gentle and ready to forgive. Never hold grudges. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Number six, go to your next level of serving others. Go to your next level of serving others. You have zero excuses being in a church like this to not, like, I don't know where to start. Or, you know, I don't want to serve, like, you can warm up all those seats all you want, but that is not going to help you conquer depression. Like some of you, you need to just get up and say, hey, tonight I'm going to sign up for a ministry. This isn't no like promo for ministry. This is the reality, the truth. You need to break off of that depression by going and serving in a ministry, going to the streets, knocking on doors, loving people, seeing people that are in worse situations than you are, and being able to say, hey, I'm here to help you. I'm telling you. Some of us are like, God, help me. And when you begin to go and help somebody else, through you helping them, you can receive a supernatural joy that makes zero sense. And you're like, man, all of a sudden I feel good. Why do you feel good? Because you're doing the Lord's work. Some of you have been unemployed because you chose to you chose to go unemployment. What I mean by that? Someone like, are you talking about like my job? No, I'm talking about in serving. All right, wait, huh? what are you talking about? You, God wants, God's employing you to serve for his kingdom. God's employing you to be serving every week. It's not something you even take a break on. It needs to be something that is a part of your lifestyle, that everywhere you go, oh no, like I'm employed by God. I'm employed by the Lord. I need a witness to this person. I need to go in and I need to go and knock on this door. I need to share the good news. Start serving. Use what you have to serve. First Peter 4.10, each of you, should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. You have gifts inside of you. Tell the person next to you, you're gifted. Every single person, no matter how you think of yourself, this is the truth, you are gifted. You are 100% gifted, and God wants to use those gifts to bring people to him. But he can't use them until you allow him to. So you need to allow him to activate you tonight. A couple of stats. I'm going to close it, but in 2013, study uh, study published in the Journal of Social Service Research, Researchers found that participants who volunteered for just two hours a week reported less symptoms of depression and improved life satisfaction compared to a control group who did not volunteer. A a 2010 study published in the Journal of Gerontology Psychological Sciences found that older adults who volunteered for at least 100 hours per year had lower levels of depressive symptoms and higher levels of well-being compared to non-volunteers. Somebody say, top person, you better start serving. 
It's time to serve. We got to go crazy. Come on, who's ready to start serving? I mean, that's like, that's like a hack. That's like a little hack. Like, that's like the first quick thing you can do right away. Just Number seven, this is it. Get some healthy friendships. Somebody say, hey, man, is that? Then bad friends got to go. Woo. Get some healthy friendships. Now, this is for some of us that have friends, groups that are not healthy for us, but this is also for some of us that are, like, isolated and I don't want friends, I don't want to connect with nobody, and I want to be my own island. It's very unhealthy. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10, it says, There are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. Some of you guys right now, you don't need friends to go and do all kinds of fun stuff. You need a brother. Galatians 6, 2. Two are better than one because they have a more satisfying return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he fail, when he falls and does not have another to lift him up. So we're going to close right now, but I want to go back to previously I, I touched on and I mentioned your first and most important step to winning this battle against oppression is to surrender your life to Jesus. It's the only, like that, if you don't do that, you could do all these things and you could try to overcome it on your own and you could try to be self-made and all this stuff. The answer is in Jesus. Some of us, we need to surrender all over again because the doors that we open and the things that we've allowed into our lives, they came with a company of depression and death. Some, we have never truly given our life to Jesus, and today is your day to do it for the very first time. Now is your moment. Somebody say now. Somebody say right now. Somebody say it's my moment. Let's all stand up right now. We're going to take the most important step forward on overcoming depression. The most important step, stepping towards Jesus. It's the most important step. Now, if you've seen those symptoms, and you're saying, hey, I'm struggling with some of those symptoms, or you're saying, man, I'm struggling with all of those, or, man, I'm just bound by depression, This is the thing, you have to be real honest with yourself where you're at. Now, I'm not telling you to, to lift up your hand right now, but I'm telling you to have an honest conversation with yourself. Are you truly in a place where you're depressed? Is it hard for you right now? Is it difficult to smile? Did you lose somebody in your family and it's so hard to move forward right now? Are there cycles of depression in your life? Patterns in your life? Seasons in your life where you fall back into depression? Are there things that you have done that you regret so bad that it continues to consume your mind, your past, your history, and you feel like you can't move over or move forward. Are there things in your life right now that are holding you hostage mentally? God could right now do a miracle in your life. You may be in battling this for 10 years, but I'm telling you the truth, if you would really just believe with me right now that God right now in this moment, he can do a miracle right now and he could break that depression off of your mind. He could break all those things off of you. He could deliver you right now. He could heal the brokenness within you right now. He can do it. I just need you to believe it with me. 
God doesn't want any person in this room to leave with depression. If you contemplate a suicide, you need to you need to deal with that right now. If you were like me, like you had some imagination to you even, you didn't even go far, but you just had some imagination, I would deal with it right now while it's in seed form. You don't want it to begin uh, to grow roots and become a tree when you're in the worst position of your life. Deal with it right now. Don't worry about who's around you. Don't worry about, man, what am I going to, like, I don't want to, to open up your first step. You need to be bold. And remember, we're, we're, this is a war zone. This is not, this is for people that are saying, I'm done with depression. I will overcome it. Tonight, through the power of Jesus Christ, I will overcome. I will conquer depression. Tonight, that's who this is for. If you're like, no, I want to keep it still, then that's, that's you. But this, I'm calling right now. If you want to conquer depression, if you say once and for all, whatever it is, the heartbreak, the, the loss of the loved one, the, the mental things that you're going through right now, I want you to run up to these altars right now. Run up to these altars. Heaven 
the only way that you're going to be able to be in eternity with God forever is if you gave your life to Jesus. You might hear a lot of crazy, wild teachings that all all roads lead to heaven and that all these religions lead to heaven. It's not true. Jesus made it very clear. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is your bridge to the Father. Would you receive forgiveness today for your sins? Would you repent of these sins and would you make Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior? If you want to do that with me right now, just lift up your hands. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Come on. Lift up your hands if you're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to repent of my sins. Come on, right now, this is your time. This is your moment. Don't let nothing hold you back. Don't let nothing hold you back. Give it all to Jesus. Give it all to Jesus. Come on, we got something better for you. Leave your hands up and repeat this prayer after me. And say it with your whole heart. Say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Tonight, forgive me of all my sins. I repent of every sin that I have committed. I choose to put my faith in Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for my sins, and that on the third day, he was raised from the dead. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Help me to be a disciple, to make disciples. In Jesus' name, I pray. Come on, will you celebrate? Would you give a hand? Man. Every one of you guys, I'm going to pray over you. One, one, this is the last thing. To overcome depression. If you're dealing with depression, I'm going to pray for you right now. Just bow your head, close your eyes. We're going to pray. Father, I pray right now for every single person dealing with depression. We break the bondage of depression right now in the name of Jesus. All depression, we cancel you now in Jesus' name. All regret, all suicide, I cancel it now in the name of Jesus. All things that are trying to destroy them right now through depressive thoughts, through patterns, cycles of depression. I break you now in the name of Jesus. Generational curses of depression. I break you now in Jesus' name. Release your joy right now, God. Release your peace right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Do you believe that? If you're in agreement with that, say amen. I love you guys. God bless you. Tomorrow, I'm going to be preaching on this topic in L.A. at our South Campus in Carson. So if someone missed it, bring them tomorrow, 7 p.m.